see it tonight. Um, and he, uh, he, like we said going in, he wasn't put in with somebody who was a nobody. He was put in by with a guy who was a champion because he has the heart of a champion. Uh, but you know, you saw Mikey uh, had looked, I, I thought, terrific after such a long layoff. Um, Mikey. Hello, everybody. I'm glad I'm back. Um, very happy with my performance tonight. I think um, I showed uh, everybody that you know I'm uh, back and never left. Really, uh, I don't think I showed any signs of any ring rust or anything. So I'm just very happy to you know be here, and I think I'm, I'm ready to go after the champions and show everybody that. You know, I got a lot more to prove and a lot more to uh, accomplish in the sport. I don't know if you guys have any questions you guys want to ask. Sure, I'm just going to let... Uh, Here we go. Let Mikey, Garcia, JC, Papalio. Let Elio Rojas uh, just say a couple of words. Buenas noches. Good evening. So, hoy no fue mi noche, pero antes de Mikey Garcia. So, that wasn't my night. It was Mikey Garcia night. Congratulations. We want to congratulate Mikey Garcia. In reality, I felt his power. Creo que el peso I think the weight. Y nada, y me siento bien, estoy bien de salud. The weight made a little difference. I feel good. I feel pronto, healthy. Pronto feel estaré, good. Estaré de vuelta. Pretty soon I'll be back. Pero mi peso natural, 130 libras. My weight, my original weight is 130. That's what I should be fighting at. Eh, no quiero poner excusas. We eh, don't want to have no excuses. He had a better night than I did. Thank you. Mikey, uh, you, you said right now, you said you're back. You know, you, you showed everybody that you know, there's no, there's nothing that's gonna hold you back. What, any plans right now that as you said? Well, I, I, uh, I would love to come down to lightweight and fight for a world title in my next fight if possible. And um, I think I'm ready for, for just about anybody, you know. Um, if uh, I can get a world title fight in my next fight, you know, I would definitely, definitely uh, welcome that opportunity. Any names that you know you want to pick right now? It, I mean, in the end, it's still out to the promoters and managers, handlers, but um, one name that comes to mind is WBO lightweight champion Terry Flanagan. Um, I would really love that, that belt. Uh, reason for that because I held the WBO at featherweight and super featherweight. I would like to add the lightweight to my collection. Thank you. If there's a big fight, if there's an thank you. If there's, how you doing, Mikey? Congratulations. If there's an opportunity for a big fight at 140, what do you think about that? How do you feel about moving uh, north? I first want to make my, my stand at 135 pounds. I think uh, as this fight was scheduled at 140 pounds, I came down to 138 because I wanted to feel my body and see how comfortable I felt moving down with the intention of coming down to 135. And I really don't want to skip the lightweight division. I want to first win the title there. And uh, if we can unify titles, if that's available, do that. If not, then for sure we'll welcome an opportunity at 140 pounds. I think I can I can compete with anybody at the end of the 135 or 140 division. Thank you, Mike. Uh, there's another lightweight who's been looking really impressive, Slada Kanan, who actually I, I believe is promoted by Lou Bella. Is that also somebody that you'd be interested in fighting at lightweight? No. Okay. If they um, if that's a match that's presented to me, and that's the the name that I gotta go through, I'm ready to fight anybody. Like I said. As a fighter, I don't think there's anybody who wants to duck anybody. At this point, I don't want to duck anybody. I don't want to pretend that I'm taking easy way outs or things like that. I don't want anybody to misinterpret anything like that. If the fights don't happen, it's for other reasons. Maybe networks or promotional people, management, that handlers sometimes prevent fights from happening. But I'm willing to fight anybody. I think I showed everybody that I'm a key player at any, any division in, at the 135 or 140. Preferably 135 because that's where I want to win a world title at. It's probably be more likely that other people would like like managers and promoters, etc., are going to be trying to hold him back than he's going to be worried about fighting anybody. Um, you know, look, look, look what he did tonight, too. I mean, the, this guy just kept getting up. He fought a world champion, you know. I mean, 
he could have come back against Bozo the Clown after all the time he's been off and, and, and gotten away with it. That's not what he did. And, you know, I don't think you're going to have to worry about matchmaking for Mikey Garcia. Mikey, quick question here. You and I talked a couple weeks ago about everything that's been lost to about the holdouts. How good did it feel to get back in the ring to put a punch in a professional fight and just forget about everything that went on the last two years? It felt really good because uh, now I'm back at doing what I do, what I gotta, you know, what I love most, you know, showing the fans the kind of fighter that I am. You know, two and a half years, you know, um, of litigation and just a lot of politics, you know, um, prevented me from, from continuing to do what I love and showing the fans the kind of fighter that I am. But now that I'm finally back, earlier today as I was lacing up my, my shoes and putting on the trunk, it felt good to finally get get a chance to show everybody that, you know, I'm, I'm a great fighter and I, I really believe in myself. I think this is going to be the next, you know, stage of my career will be the most memorable of my career. And it really felt really good. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you guys.